Hi everyone. Today we'll be doing acids, bases, and buffers with Jared. <laughs> Check it out. Got my celebration socks on the day. Oh, what are you celebrating? Oh, uh, we're almost done with the semester. Oh yeah. That's good. <laughs> so first we're gonna calibrate the pH meter. So this is the pH meter here. It's connected to the Logger Pro software on this desktop. So that's how we'll be reading the pH for today. So we're going to um, calibrate our probe using a two-point calibration. So we have two solutions, a pH 4 and a pH 7. So we're going to immerse the probe in those solutions and calibrate them according to what the pH should be. So it's important to rinse the pH probe with GI water in between every reading so that we don't have any leftover solution on our probe. So here we have various different substances that we're going to test the pH for each of them. So the first one that we're going to do is some ammonia. And to do this, we're going to pour some in a medium-sized test tube, or a large test tube. And we're just going to dip the probe into the solution, as you can see here. And then our Logger Pro software will tell us the pH. So the pH for vinegar, or excuse me, for ammonia is 10.47. So Jared will write that in here. And then we're also going to use some litmus paper in that card to see what the pH is according to that paper and see if the probe and paper both match. So here's our litmus paper. It's colored already. And then there's a scale on the container based on what color it changes that's going to tell us what the pH is. So he's going to dip it in the solution and the color is going to tell us the approximate number of the pH. It's like a bluish. And we're around 11. About 11. That was pretty close. We got 10.47 with the probe. And we're going to say about 11 with the litmus paper. So the next solution, well first we're going to rinse our probe. Because we don't want any leftover ammonia in there. And then we're going to measure the same way the pH of shampoo ivory soap, lemon juice, and Coca-Cola. So for the other substances, 
lemon juice pH and the Coca-Cola pH, these are the values for both the probe and the litmus paper. So now we're on to part C of the experiment, which is the effect of acid or base on the pH of water. So we have 50 milliliters of water, DI water, in a beaker. We've immersed our electrode and we'll record the initial reading of pH, which is 5.05. So next we're going to use um, dropper bottles of hydrochloric acid to expel a certain amount of drops into the solution and record the pH. So first, according to our table, we need one tenth of a drop, one drop, two drops, five drops, and the full dropper. So we're going to go in that order. So for our one tenth of a drop, Jared's going to try his best. And then we can stir using the electrode to stir the solution. And you can see the pH is already starting to go down. And we'll record this as 3.12 for our one tenth of a drop addition of hydrochloric acid. So the pH we're going to use for the water in the beginning of the sodium hydroxide addition is 3.57. So we're going to do the same thing with the sodium hydroxide. We're going to add a tenth of a drop, one drop, two drops, five drops, and then the full dropper. So these are the total um, pH values after adding different amounts of the acid and the base to just DI water. So now we're moving on to part D, the effect of acids and bases on the pH of acetate mixture. So we've mixed acetic acid and sodium acetate in a beaker and we're going to record the pH initially, which is 3.10. So this is for the adding the acid dropwise. So we're doing it the same way we did with just the water, where we're adding those specific drops of each, the acid and the base. So we're gonna start with the acid. So our tenth of a drop goes first, and we're going to see how the pH is affected. We will repeat this with another mixture of acetate and we will add sodium hydroxide by the different drop amounts and record the pH. So for the addition of the NaOH, we started with a pH of 3.2 for the acetate mixture and this was the trend as we added more drops of sodium hydroxide. So this is the complete table for part D for the acetate mixture. So now we're on part E, the effect of acid or base on the pH of alka seltzer. So we're first going to place one tablet of alka seltzer into 100 ml of DI water and dissolve it completely.
Once this is done, we will transfer half of the solution, so 50 milliliters, into a beaker, and then we will determine the pH of that solution. And then we will repeat the same procedure that we've been doing, where we add different amounts of acid and base and see how the pH is changing once we do that. So now we've transferred 50 mils of the Alka-Seltzer solution to the beaker and the pH of this is So now we will add the hydrochloric acid, different drop amounts like we did previously. Now we are at 6.37 after adding a full drop dropper worth of acid. And we will repeat this with sodium hydroxide this time and see what happens. So after adding the NaOH to the Alka-Seltzer solution, this is what happened. So here's the final table for part E after adding the acid or base to the alpha seltzer solution. So moving on to part E, we're going to see the effect of CO2. So for part F, we're going to start off with 50 milliliters of GI water in a beaker, and the pH of this is 8.79. Next we're going to add one drop of the 0.1 molar NaOH and see what the pH is now that we've added that. Did you do that already? Did you add it already? Okay. So Jared's already added it, so we're gonna see what the pH is. So we're now at 10.25. So next we're going to add three drops of a bromo blue indicator to our solution and note what color it changes. Obtain this straw, and Jared is gonna exhale, exhale one big breath into the solution. Fresh, clean straw. Oh, <laughs> don't suck it. <laughs> After he does that, we're going to record the pH. Oh my god. You have to do more of these, so. What? Okay. That was the longest breath in history. <laughs> that. 
hot breath right there. That's like hot breath. <laughs> Notice the color of the solution now that he's breathed all up in it. So now our pH after he blew into it is 